Welcome to a beginner tutorial in Midjourney. Midjourney is one of the coolest text to image AI generative art software apps coming out right now. Uh, Chat GPT is all the rage, but um, my heart's with Midjourney. It's really nutty what you can make. Just with a little bit of a prompt, you do not need to be a professional artist to create absolutely stunning images. These are not stock images. These are have not been made by professional artists. The AI has somehow they trained this AI and built and developed this AI to be able to make absolutely gorgeous, shocking, original images. So for example, we've got ourselves this 3D looking car that looked like it was made by a 3D artist with professional lighting, very soft shadows, and, and all these cool details. Um, check out this chef who's creating this, you know, sort of potion or fire. Look at that really, really expressive quality fire and these, this very subtle blur. So there's a lot of style coming out of here. Um, and again, these are not professional artists. They just knew how to craft a prompt and, 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 and make stuff well. Look at all these burgers, all different types of burgers here. Let's just take a look at uh, this one. I mean, check that out. Look at that meat. The meat looks a little bit brainy to me, but that lettuce looks awesome and the layering on the onions and tomatoes. I mean, I'm hungry. This looks great. So uh, let's get started in Midjourney. Anybody could get started in Midjourney. It's really, really easy. The way you do it is you simply press join the beta and they'll let you in. Now, Midjourney is an app that is built on top of Discord. Discord is a messenger app, very similar to something like Slack, where it's also a messenger app like Telegram or WhatsApp or something like that, but it also has it, the ability to build apps on top of it and you can build bots on top of it. So the main thing you're going to do is once you join Midjourney, they're going to throw you into Discord and from there, you're going to get thrown into the Midjourney server. The Midjourney server we can see is has got a million people online, 15 million members, and this is where everything's going to happen. And what's going to happen is you're going to get thrown into one of these newbie groups. And be ready for it. This is where you're going to do all your image art generation. This is where you're going to type in your prompts and start building your cool stuff. And just something to be aware of is while you're doing your thing, tons of other people are doing their thing. As you can see, people are um, generating on the fly their images of you know, dogs and soccer and all this great stuff. So you come down here below and you write the most important word. The most important word you need to know in Midjourney is imagine. I am imagine. Once you're starting the image, you can start putting it. Imagine tells the Midjourney bot to start creating an image based on text. So you've got a prompt. So we're going to do cute chibi dragon, uh, you know, plastic, um, yellow, green, blue, red, uh, with big wings. And I'm going to now just ignore this for the time being. I'm going to add a little dash five here because I'm going to tell it to use a version five, but I'll explain that another time. We're going to send that over to the bot. You can see that I'm using imagine the, the, the command called imagine, and it's sending a message to the mid journey bot based on this prompt, right? And we're going to have to wait a minute, but as you can see, things are starting to happen. Now we're at 0%. We already see four images coming in. We're going to see a grid of four images. And we're going to see what's going to happen now. It's at 15%. It takes about a minute or so, depending on your speed and different things. Um, as you can see, other people are doing stuff while we're doing our thing. So it does get confusing at times. You do need to know where you have to kind of follow where your image is going and things are coming in at the same time. So you have to be ready for that. Okay. Um, and another thing, you are generating your image in public. It's happening in public with everybody else. So if there's something that's really... Um, important that you don't want to share with the world, then um, there are other ways around that and having a private group. But for right now, it's everything's in public. So let's take a look at what we have. It's at 93%. Just another second. Where'd it go? There it went. So these are the four images we created out of that little prompt called cute chibi dragon plastic yellow, green, blue, red, and, and with, uh, with big wings. And we got ourselves as cute looking uh, characters, right? It looks very cute to me. I don't know. I like it. Now, let's say this is called image one, image two, image three, and image four. One, two, three, four. What are you going to do next? You've got these eight buttons down here that are really important. The U stands for upscale. The image comes in as a grid that's 1024 by 1024, if I'm not mistaken. And that's split up into a grid of four. 
but you might want this image for to be a little bit bigger so you can share on social media. So let's say you're ready. You're like, this looks beautiful. This is exactly what I want. You can just click on the U button, which means upscale to an image of 1024 by 1024. That's the standard upscale image. You can get a bit bigger than that. You can change the um, aspect ratio if you need things to be, you know, different size, like 16 by 9, um, or different aspect ratios or things that fit on like a phone for like a um, for like a, a background in like on a phone, like a, what's it called, a, a background image. But for the most part, they start as squares by default. So let's upscale number one. And we're going to see that it's sending to the mid journey a request to do an upscale. And we got it back already. So here it is. You have this image. It's been upscaled. You can check it on the browser. You can save the image. You can, you can take a look at it and you can save it and you can make variations. You can check it out on the web. Um, and it will even be saved to your gallery and you can even see what prompt you use to create it. You can see the, um, the size and different information. Great. Um, one second. Let's go back in. So now, let's say, let's go back to those four images. We notice that we can upscale number one, upscale two, three, and four. What do these V stand for? V stands for variation. Let's say I really like this one, but I want to make just a few little changes. So what you can do is you can make a variation on this image. It means that the AI will still kind of stick to this general structure, this general style, but it will let you do little variations. If you want to completely make a new thing, then you go down here and create a new imagine, a new prompt. If you really don't like any four images, then start fresh and try something else. But if you do like this and it's really close, but you just want to make a few little um, variations, then this is the way to go. So let's make a variation number one. You press variation, it's going to bring up the old prompt and it's going to let you add a little bit of words to it. Let's see what happens. Let's say we want to make sure that the eyes are, I don't know, green. Um, gr with green eyes and uh, yellow wings. Let's see if that works. And embossed uh, texture. Let's see if this makes any difference. You have to kind of get used to it. You have to try a lot of different things to see what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes you discover that, you know, what you added didn't make any changes or what you added make, made the wrong changes. And with time, the more you do this, you'll, you'll understand how sort of the AI responds to your words. So let's take a look. We've got a job waiting for us, remixing. The word remixing is important. When you press V, which means variation, but the other language for that is called a remix of a prompt. I'm taking an old prompt. I'm taking an old image and remixing it for some some new variation. So let's check it out. We're getting our we're getting pretty close to what we said. If you remember, we asked for yellow wings. We asked for an embossed texture. So let's see if it added that. If you recall, we didn't have any real texture on here, and the wings were pretty yellow, I guess, in the first place. Um, and we didn't have any texture on here. So let's see if it responded to us. So I actually did a really good job. Check this out. It did do an embossed uh, texture. Let's get a little closer. Uh, that looks like an embossed texture to me. So you just see, just by adding a little bit of texture, this one added eyebrows. It added something to the chest. This one added a little texture to the wings. This one added these little white nibs and these um, and these other lines and a little face thing. So in my opinion, it actually, you know, at least on the embossed side, it really did respond well. So, wow, you really can do a lot in just a few lines of... Um, typing, you already got yourself a really cool image. Can you believe it? In just about five minutes, we figure out how to sign up to Midjourney, get into Discord, start using the Imagine prompt to generate really cool images with just some text. So uh, it happens to be that Midjourney's got this documentation site. And if you come into the user guide and go to the parameters, parameters are really cool. There are these things that you can add at the end of your prompt. So you got the imagine, you write your prompt like we wrote chibi dragon, yellow, blue, green, that whole thing. And then you put these two hyphens or two dashes and you write some word and some value. And that lets us do some cool stuff, some extra stuff. And we're going to try using a term called chaos, a term called no, and a term called stylize, which I think are all super fun to use. There's also aspect ratio. So I'm thinking in the next video, we go through some of these 
these parameters and start using them and experimenting with them and and see how it comes out. There's a lot to learn, but if you just hang out and see how we do stuff, you're going to learn so much in such a short time. So leave comments down below. Um, consider subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video. Awesome, guys. Have a good day.